What's up, y'all? My name is Nate. This is Throttle Only. This is an Audi SQ7. Let's check it out. All right, y'all. So first things first, let's look at this key. So you're going to have a beautiful S here on the back of it. Your panic button will be there as well. And then if you want to take out the physical key, you can push this button right here. As we flip it over, you're going to have a lock button up top. You can press twice to unlock and open your hatch. Then you're also going to have an unlock button there and then the beautiful Audi logo down below. Okay, so let's go ahead and start up front here. So let's look at this hood for a second. This hood has two body lines on either side that look pretty good. But the main thing that I noticed when I first come up is this beautiful paint color. There's so many specks and whatnot throughout this paint. This paint color is gonna be Daytona Gray Pearl. It looks absolutely fantastic. Another thing to note maybe about the styling of this vehicle is it's gonna look like any regular Q7 except it's gonna have this SQ7 badge up here and it looks really good. As we make our way down from the hood, you're gonna see these giant Audi rings. They are pretty iconic. They are gonna be in a pretty nice chrome color. However, I think it would look a lot better if you just did a massive chrome delete on this vehicle. And that, you can actually spec that on the website. That would be under the black optic package. I think it would look really nice with this and then also black out that grill as well. And then just a little bit below those Audi rings, you're also gonna have your front camera there. This is gonna have some of the nicest cameras I've seen. I'll show you that a little bit later. And then also talking about this grill, this grill is absolutely massive. There's so much areas for air to pass through here in the center and then on either side. You can see just how massive these air inlets are. And then I also wanna talk about these headlights here. These headlights look super nice. I love how it has this separation on each LED. It looks so nice. And then when you turn on your turn signals or your hazards, it's actually gonna be sequential. That is so cool. And then as we look further in there as well, you're gonna have just some really nice LED projector headlights. All right, now looking at the side of the vehicle here, looking at these wheels. So these wheels are gonna be the 21 inch five twin spoke V design by color wheels. That is a mouthful. Anyway, they look pretty good. I'm usually a blacked out kind of wheel person, but I honestly don't mind these. I just wish the rest of the car had that blacked out delete chrome look. Also, you're gonna have a little bit of dimension above the wheels for some fenders, just a small amount, and they are gonna be body colored as well. As we look at these mirrors, these mir mirrors are gonna fold. It's also gonna have the blind spot monitoring system as well. And it will also have your LED indicator on the outside. And there will also be a camera underneath that mirror because this is gonna have full surround cameras that you can actually move. Then also looking at these door handles here. So these door handles are gonna have proximity sensing. You can just put your hand behind there and then unlock it. And if you want to lock it, you can push the button that is located just on the handle there. And then so continuing on with the side of the vehicle, let's just stop here for a second and just look at all of these body lines on this vehicle. It's pretty amazing how they do it. So there's two body lines above the door handle here, and then they also kind of merge into one. And then just below those door handles towards the bottom where you're gonna have this body colored almost side skirt, although it's not quite one, you're also gonna have this giant panel here that's gonna say Quasho. This is gonna be in this aluminum brush color and it honestly doesn't look too bad. Giant Quasho logo there towards the bottom. All right, so continuing on with the side of the vehicle, just to wrap it up. So then you're also gonna have this nice chrome piece that's gonna be wrapping around all of your windows. Up top, you're also gonna have some roof rails that are gonna be included in this brush aluminum color slash chrome as well. And then lastly, I did wanna to note too, with those proximity door handles, you can also do the proximity sensing in the rear as well and lock it from the rear doors too. All right, so looking at the rear here, so let's start at the top. So you're gonna have a shark fin antenna that's gonna be up top. And then below that, you're gonna have a pretty nice roof spoiler as well. And it's gonna have a cutout in the center. It's gonna allow airflow to pass through. I just love how that looks, especially from the side. And then you're also gonna have a third brake light that's just gonna be below that roof spoiler there. And this glass is gonna be kind of slanted. And so you're gonna have a wiper there. Below that, you're gonna have a pretty nice Audi logo there. It's gonna be in that chrome color. And then as we come just a little bit further down, there's gonna be a giant chrome kind of brush aluminum look 
piece that's going to separate out some of these tail lamps. Let me just turn on the car right now and let me just show you what it looks like with the turn signals on, the reverse camera, and that third brake light. I think all of them look pretty nice, especially when we have these sequential turn signals. I absolutely love that. And then also, of course, you're going to have your reverse camera that's going to be back here as well. And then there's going to be a pretty nice SQ7 badge back here with a little red area there as well. As we come on down, you're going to have a pretty nice brushed aluminum color diffuser. That actually I like a lot. And then you're going to have these nice quad exhaust tips, which sound really, really good. Let me show you. And that beautiful exhaust note is going to be from this twin turbo four liter V8 engine. And this thing looks absolutely gorgeous. I know this is just an engine cover, but still what a beautiful engine bay. So the trim I have here today is the premium plus. The other trim available is going to be the prestige. The exterior color that I mentioned earlier is Daytona gray pearl. And the starting MSRP for a 2024 SQ7 is 90,400 US dollars. As far as the performance, it has a four liter twin turbo V8 engine that makes 500 horsepower and 568 foot pounds of torque. It also has an eight speed Tiptronic automatic transmission and Quattro all wheel drive. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the trunk space here in this Audi SQ7. So I'm gonna actually use my foot to unlock the trunk. I'm gonna kick right here and it'll pop right on open. So this is gonna be a seven seater. You can see I have these last two seats up here on the third row. And let's look at the loading floor here cause there's not gonna be much of one, nice and flat. You're also gonna have this area here to store some stuff if you would like. Some nice LEDs right here as well to illuminate. And then back here, you're also gonna have a 12 volt as well. You can also raise and lower the suspension right here. And if you wanna lower these last two seats in the third row, you use these buttons right here. And you can also lift them as well, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and put these seats down using these buttons right here. And then we'll do the same on this side. And you'll probably notice too that it doesn't initially fit. And then so it'll actually fold down that headrest. And then here is a look at how much space you have with that third row down. I'm gonna go ahead and put the second row down as well. So to let the second row seats down, you'll have to just push right here. And the seat will be flat. And then if you want to raise your third row, you can use these buttons right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put down the other side. All right, and then same thing on this side, push right here. And then you can also raise those seats by pushing these buttons right here. And then to get this center seat down, you'll have to pull this small tab right here. And then now all of the seats are flat. And then here is another view of what it looks like with all of the seats flat. There is so much room back here. And then if you wanna lock it, you can, also, you can actually do that from back here as well. You have a trunk close button and a lock button. If I go ahead and push the lock button, it will close the trunk and lock the vehicle. So how is this thing to sit in? So this is a very comfortable back seat. It is gonna be the second row. Since there is gonna be a third row, it can be a little bit cramped. I don't have the seat adjusted for my height at six foot one because I wasn't going to be able to fit but the seats are very nice looking. It is gonna be in a volcano red color and they are pretty plush. They are a little bit on the thinner side, however. As we look at this door panel here, starting at the top, so there's not gonna be frameless windows, but you're gonna have a pretty nice manual sunshade that blocks out the sun pretty nicely. And then down below from that, you're gonna have very nice carbon fiber. It's gonna be super glossy and it is real. 
There's also gonna be nice Alcantara material just next to that, along with the beautiful red volcano color leather. You're also gonna have a Bang Olufsen sound system as well, and it is gonna have a pretty nice speaker design there. And then you're also gonna have a cup holder and some storage space down below. So then as you come into the vehicle, there is going to be a door sill that is gonna be illuminated, but it's not gonna have any logos or anything like that on it. And then looking at the B pillar, the B pillar is gonna have another small speaker there, as well as your own personal vent. And then there's also gonna be some more venting in the center with your own display that you can control. It's gonna have a full digital panel. You can control your fan speed, your actual temperature as well. And then just below that, there's gonna be a 12 volt adapter with some USBs. There's also gonna be an armrest in the center that's gonna fold down and up above, there's gonna be a giant panoramic roof. And that's also gonna come with a shade as well. And that shade works very well. It blocks out almost all of the sun. All right, so I'm gonna show you the third row now. So you have to pull here and that will flatten this seat. And then you have to push right here and pull. And it's gonna be assisted as well. There we are. And then to put up the rear seats, you have to push here. And as you can see, they are automatic, which is nice. And then you can also do the same on the other side. The only thing that's not gonna be automatic is this center portion that I showed before. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the passenger door here. So you're gonna have these beautiful materials that we had on the rear. Just look at this carbon fiber. It looks so good. You're gonna have your unlock and lock controls there, your handle, window controls, and then your beautiful speaker, as well as some storage right there. As you come on into the vehicle, you are gonna have an illuminated sill, and there's your beautiful S right there. SQ7 floor mats there. Just look at this carbon fiber. And then in front of the passenger, there's gonna be all of this gloss black. And this area here is actually gonna light up. I'll show you what that looks like. And then just look at this dash. Pretty soft touch, very nice looking materials. And then looking at these seats, you're gonna have all your automatic controls there. You're gonna have bolster controls there as well as your lumbar support. Beautiful red leather. These are gonna be heated and cooled seats as well. And then looking at the driver's door panel, pretty much the same exact thing here. Just take a really good look at these materials. You're gonna have some automatic seat settings there all of your window controls. They're all gonna be automatic as well. Your mirror controls are gonna be right there. And just look at this material here. Your trunk button is gonna be right here. Another illuminated door sill as you enter the vehicle. Aluminum dead pedal with some rubber on top for grip. And same seats we saw in the passenger area. Okay, so let's take a look at the center console here on the inside. So we're gonna go ahead and push on it. And you can see it's pretty plush, so much so that it's kind of leaving marks inside of it. And then you can open it by pulling right here. And then this will also stay wherever you place it, which is nice. Pretty small area right here. There are two USB type C's, and then you are gonna have a tray area right there as well. And just look at all of this carbon fiber. Looks so nice. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this. And then you can also adjust it as well. So you see there's a gap right here. You'll just have to hold here and then you can push it back a little bit more, however you might like. Your shift lever is going to be right here. You're also gonna have some cup holders there, a 12 volt adapter. Your start stop button is gonna be just up here. This button right here will toggle all of your camera systems. I'll show you what that looks like. So if I push that button, it will show you the front camera here. I do have the door open, so let me shut that. And then so this is gonna be the front camera. This is going to be the surround camera. And if you push this button here, you can have a full front view, a full side top view. This is the rear view. 
Also, you can see the wheels, the front wheels and the rear wheels so you don't curb them. And if I go back to 3D here, you can actually move the vehicle fully around. This is actually really awesome. Okay, so going back down here. So if you were to push this button right here, after exiting from the cameras, it'll show you driver assistance menu. And then you're also gonna have your volume control knob right here, which feels very nice. And it does have a gloss black finish on top and it's very nice click to it as well. Your hazard button is gonna be in the center there. Your traction control off is gonna be right here. Your drive selectors is gonna be right here. And then if you were to push that, you can just toggle up or you can also just push on the screen and then you might also notice right here, it's gonna raise or lower using that adaptive suspension depending on the drive mode. Also, the exhaust note will change. If you're in dynamic, that's gonna be the most sporty mode and it is gonna be the most sporty exhaust as well. And then more AC controls down below. This bottom screen here is primarily gonna be for your AC controls. You're gonna have temperature, the location of your fans, the fan speed there. This is also going to have heated and cooled seats, which is very nice. And then up here on the top, it's just gonna be your standard menu stuff, radio, media, phone, navigation, Apple CarPlay, which is gonna be the number one thing, vehicle, settings, and then some other items there as well. And then you can select music, phone, and navigation here. So let's just look at this dashboard here for just a second, looking at the AC vents here. So they are nicely integrated into the dashboard. And you're gonna have a Quattro badge on this side, which I showed earlier. Just look at this interior. It looks so beautiful. And then looking at this steering wheel, this steering wheel is pretty nice. You're gonna have the Audi logo in the center. You're also gonna have an S badge here down below. And you might be able to tell that this steering wheel is a nice leather perforated steering wheel. It does have some nice stitching on it as well. And it's pretty thin too. There's not a lot of stuff going on in this steering wheel like some of the other ones we might have seen like from AMG. So if we were to push this button right here on the steering wheel, I'll press this and you can see it'll change the inside here. If I push it again, it will also change it again. So you can change a bunch of stuff in here. If you wanted to change all of this stuff right here, you'd actually use these arrows right here. And then you can see at the top here, it will actually continue to change. And some of the items you'll be able to scroll, which will use this wheel right here. For example, this one you can see I'm able to scroll. Personally, I just like to keep it on maps. I think that's the best. I don't hardly use this view right here, but I do think that this view looks pretty awesome. And you can literally just scroll out and keep going. That's kind of cool. Okay, so moving on with the rest of this steering wheel here. So on the other side here on the right, this is gonna be your volume controls. You're also gonna have foam buttons there. This is also gonna have some paddle shifters. You can see the plus back there, standard wipers and all that stuff as well. But the cruise control is gonna be right here and that's gonna use an actual stock. I am not a fan of this, but it is what it is. It's pretty straightforward on how to use it. And then you're also gonna have an automatic steering wheel as well. And then the last thing I want to know about this interior is this giant panoramic roof. So to control it, you'll use this top one right here and that will move back the sunshade. And this is a very, very slow sunshade. And then you can also put back the window as well. And what's really nice about this is you can actually do both of them at the same time as well. All right, let's take this thing out for a drive. All right, so I'm inside the Audi SQ7. Let's go ahead and start with a zero to 60. I'm gonna be in dynamic mode in S and I'm gonna do a brake boost launch. Ooh. Oh my God, this thing is absolutely insane. 
This is a seven seater SUV. And this thing goes zero to 60 in 4.3 seconds. That is absolutely insane. It launches pretty hard. I have a Tesla Model Y Performance and that is also really fast and all of that torque and horsepower is available right away. I really do not see a difference between that and this. And this is a lot heavier. This is also super comfortable to drive. Like the seats are super nice. All of these materials look super premium as well. I love this carbon fiber that's just littered everywhere. Really the only thing I don't like about this infotainment and all that stuff is probably just the fact that it's gloss black, which means I'm constantly having to wipe it down because of fingerprints. But honestly, with that aside, this thing is really nice. You can also just shift it right on into a comfort mode. It'll increase the suspension, make it a little bit softer for you, and it's just honestly such a breeze to drive. It's really crazy too with the amount of power that this thing has, just in comfort mode, if you want to push back on your shift lever like this, it'll turn it into S mode. Oh my gosh. And then you have all of that power available to you just like that. I'm gonna do another zero to 60 here just because it's so fun, but I'm gonna do it in manual shift mode. So I'm gonna let the car lower. Oh, just listen to that. I'm not gonna brake boost it. Oh my gosh. This is super fun. There's also a lot of interior lighting on this thing as well. I think BMW has a lot more. And actually on that point, I think that if I were to choose a bigger SUV with a big old burly V8 and lots of horsepower, I think I probably would choose a BMW X5M or a BMW X5 M50i or something along those lines. Maybe not the full M because that's not a fair comparison. But I say that because there's just a lot more features in the BMW, like heated and cooled cup holders, massage seating, all of that sort of stuff. So personally, even though this vehicle is super fun to drive and it is a sleeper, I think that if I'm gonna spend the amount of money that this thing costs, which is almost $100,000, I think that I honestly would choose the BMW X5 over this. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, consider subscribing, consider leaving a like. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.